previously existing land use conformity certificate for PLOT for short. So basically what Mr. White is asking is to be able to use the duplex as a duplex. You can see the house on the property as well as the duplex and part of the accessory structure. Jason property, single family. Happy New Year. Um, <laughs> and that's all the end. Um, basically, staff reviewed the case. We realized that we operated as a duplex for years, if not decades. It made little impact upon Jason properties. It is a large lot, acre and a half. R15 only requires about a third of an acre minimum lot size, 15,000 square feet. Um, so the lot is ample enough to accommodate both the single family residents and the duplex. Staff looked at it, we recommend approval with two conditions. The first being that the duplex building may not be enlarged or expanded and shall not be occupied by more than two residents each for, for a total of four residents and that the existing vegetative buffer along the northern and eastern property line shall remain undisturbed. Any questions? I got one. Sure. Do you know when the duplex was last used? No, no I just want to be longer than I have a question. Um, is there some reason why you wouldn't want to have a, a little family in one of those? Why only two people? Why not mom, dad, and a baby? We understand it, it, it's a balancing act. We understand that this is a single family residence and to try to minimize the impact of almost a multi-family development, for lack of a better word, that condition was put in place. Well, so yes, it. And the property that's immediately adjacent to this is zoned for a, um, that skinny one between it and Jaden Place. That's a zone for... It's PRD 10, which yes. is one of our... It's a throwback um, from years and years ago to plan development. Yeah, well, uh, that's recent, that plan development on that skinny bit, because I think that we heard something about it. The lot to the east is R10. 316 Eagle Road to the east. The last skinny one next to Jaden. Now that's showing PD. It's a PD. Next to Jaden that's in between. Yeah. That's to the east. That's R10. It's on that map. It's a similar color, but you see the R10 neighborhood on the lower left with the matching greenish yellow color. 316 Eagle Road was rezoned from R15 to R10. Okay. Three or four years ago. That's that's what I'm remembering. Okay, thank you. Across the street, where it's a little more green. That's PRD 10 from 25 years ago. Any other questions? Anything else? Thank you. Uh, would the applicant or the applicant's representation like to address the board? I mean, I can. Uh, I probably did a good job of finding it, but I would be happy to. Answer your questions. I wish I made them in um, <coughs> regards to when I bought the property, uh, my paperwork is in there. I think maybe April or June of uh, 2018. At that time, there was people living in the duplex. Now, uh, one of them <coughs> was living there. The, uh, a Marshall guy that you know, got in some trouble, he lived up in Athens on an expired lease and he was still living there and not paying rent and the other lady had just somehow got access to the property. So there was people living in there when I when I purchased it because I had to go through it. This being filed and and you know, do the eviction and um, charge them with trespassing to and get the uh, police department out there and get them removed out of there. But uh, other than that, you know I'm not looking to add on rezone to uh, build a bunch of houses, nothing like that. All I want to do is just be able to use the property as what was indicated and what I spent uh, about six three thousand dollars between the house and the duplexes, you know, as I bought it, you know, that's clear in there. I purchased it for $137,000 and, and got about $200,000 in the property to be able to rent it. So uh, that's all I'm looking to know expansion to add-ons, anything like that, but I'll be happy to answer any questions. I, I have 
that same question for you. Are you okay with the condition of no more than two residents, so not mom, dad, and a baby in the apartment? Well, so well certainly that, you know, to say like, a, you know, three uh, would be would be nice. I'm just, uh, I guess I'm trying to just be nice and be cordial and not, not make this a big ordeal. Uh, now, two does, does kind of limit it, uh, but, work, you know, you know how it is. I mean, part of it from my point of view, I'm wondering why I paid four, five hundred and thirty dollars for this permit and why all this is in there. It's clearly in the uh, Q Public Tax Code that it's called apartments. So it's not like this is a pride. I, you, know, you know, I'm not a, a big person with the government getting involved in your business, but you got to play by the rules, you know. So I'm just playing by the rules. But I appreciate your interest. If, if we do it three, of course that helps me, but I'm not going to jump up and down either way. You know, do, just, do you see this as being more DSU student kind of stuff, or do you? Well, you know, who, who are you aiming at? Well, uh, uh, just good renters, just. Uh, um, Right now, I am leasing uh, like to someone and to a group, and um, they, have, you know, they're they're taking care of that for me. But of course, you know, I spent a lot of money on the project. Uh, the neighbors will tell you that you know this was not hooked up to city water and sewer. Uh, he had a pump out there. According to one of the neighbors, you know, the previous owner had been dumping his washing machine and dryer on his property. You know, all that has been changed. We've hooked up. So, and, you know, what I've gone through is new flooring, new paint. So, you know, I'm not, we're not putting scum of the earth in there and just, you know, we're trying to, to um, I think anyone would say that the property has been improved drastically <coughs> since the time I bought it. So. Mr. White, uh, staff has made a recommendation to approve petition based on those two conditions and I assume that's why she asked she only asked about one are you okay with both of those conditions sure sure yeah we got the we found with the buffer and all that kind of stuff yeah. any other questions thank you sir is there anybody else here in uh, favor of this case that would like to speak or address the board no, is anybody here in opposition to this case? I saw your hand yeah. first. We'll start there. <laughs> you would please give your name and address for our record. Yes, sir. Deb Cox, 318 Crestview Drive. I'm just right around the corner from the property. Okay. Um, I noticed the answer wasn't given completely to the question who you're leasing to. And I heard leasing to a group. That would not be a halfway house for felons, would it? Well, no, it's not for felons. No, I mean, it's not for felons. Um, let, let me just address that. Um, um, I, I don't think it, it's a problem at all. Uh, I, I rent some properties in certain areas to, to Greenleaf. And this is the people that have reached a certain accountability standard that may be still going to Alcoholics Anonymous or whatever. And so I, I read those properties, and this is not one of those, but two of the, uh, the people that were licensed in that uh, venue, in that space, and dealing with that kind of stuff, approached me, and they wanted to have a, a property, and, and already had some property uh, that, that were uh, leased to those type of uh, individuals. Now, to me, I don't know if any of the neighbors would say that they've had a problem with these people. They have a person inside the house that monitors them, that checks on them, that, that follows up with them. I don't, I don't think any of these people have given them a hard time. But it is not to Greenlee for Acacia. It is to two individuals that are doing a similar, similar service. So you in that case, you would lease out the entire property to that group and they would run it instead of you? Well, I mean, I still would be involved. You know, if they called me and told me, you know, to me that gives 
more coverage. Because on my other rental property, and I'm not going by in the house and say, hey, you change air conditioning filter, you do this, this, you know, sometimes I do. But in, in this case, you've got somebody that is involved going by, checking on them, monitoring things. You know, I mean, of course, the other option is, you know, I do just lease it to give college students or whoever. And of course, that's always an option. But, um, you know, I think, I mean, but that is that is the situation. That sounds like it's a thinly veiled threat college students. Any of the research that I mentioned in the next three minutes, I have your copies for y'all. So it's Bureau of Justice Statistics and things like that, and I'll fly by night. Uh, first point, and I'll be quick. Um, there's an infinite number of studies all reporting the same conclusions. 83% is the recidivism rate for felons. That includes drugs and alcohol issues. Okay? Uh, crimes associated with these sorts of recidivism rates are drug crimes, property crimes, and violent crimes. That's 88% of the arrests. That's one study. Uh, sex offenders, I hope there's none included in that group. 67% of those recidivate, which I'm really surprised at. I think so. 64% uh, of inmates have mental health concerns. According to this gentleman, 100% of them are going to have mental health concerns. I have a concern there. 50% of those have dual diagnoses, which are never a good thing. Uh, I have degrees in criminal justice, psychology, sociology, and my area of expertise is criminal psychology. So I'm looking at that. Halfway houses are plagued with poor supervision because uh, they're largely unregulated. They're for profit. They're not to rehabilitate. George is no exception. And you have copies of that here, too. To run one of these facilities, you have to have no convictions in the past three years, not currently under supervision, no sex convictions, no current arrests, which simply means they haven't been caught in three years. Okay. Um, our neighborhood has the lowest crime rate in that house. We like to keep it that way. Uh, at BBD assured on police officers, it's our car that goes to another location. We're currently transitioning from a retirement community towards what I see as a family community. We have more families with small children moved in, and that's a very positive thing for growth and for the uh, community in Dallas. Would you move your family into a neighborhood with a halfway house for fellows? I would not. I own my house. I plan on staying there. But if I see a downturn, I will leave, just like a lot of other people, which is the primary problem in Valdosta City. Um, any questions? I would unequivocally say I really don't want that right here. I got a quick question. I, I have a question, too. What, um, Staff's recommendation of limiting the property to two residents in each building, maximum four residents total, would that condition alleviating your concern? That means three and a half of those are going to commit more crimes very shortly, I believe. Because they just got out of prison or a halfway house or a rehabilitation facility. No, that would not alleviate it at all. The threat of college students is infinitely better than the population that's going in. Any more questions? Um, yes. What we look at here is land use. And is it appropriate to have a house with two apartments on the land? Never mind who lives on them. That's not for us to decide. Our, our, what we look at is, is it appropriate to have a house with two apartments in this area? It used to, and it's become non-conforming. So if he hadn't become non-conforming because he was doing some remodel and evicting people, then he could still be doing this. Um, my question is, um, if there was a condition on here that it be not used as a halfway house, would you be okay with there being a house and two apartments there? No, that still lowers the value. Uh, it's not conforming. We're single, dwelling, primarily. It's been not conforming all along. Right. We need to keep that way. It's, it's not being used now, so it reverts back to everything else around it, from what I understand. I don't think about this. But it does lower the health use of single dwelling houses. There's no doubt about it. Renters do change the landscape. Uh, we've seen an increase in renters in the community since the downturn. We're on the upturn now, so things are starting to turn around. We're seeing families move in instead of renters. I'd like to keep it going in that direction. 
we have a good community we want to keep that way. And it's sad to say, but brothers don't take care of the property and have an investment like owners do. Thank you. Next. Uh, anybody else in opposition? I live behind R15, and uh, over a year and a half ago, they wanted to build a subdivision, and it was approved, but the streets were too small. So I brought the property that is next to R15 on the right, the dark green. I own half an acre next to it, so I own the property right behind what was talking about. I remember when that gentleman lived in that apartment because he had a truck that he cranked up at 5.30 in the morning every morning with glass packs. And for two years, I woke up every morning at 5.30. The day you got rid of him was the best day. Me, I had no neighborhood. I totally agree with what Mickey said about the homeowners. They're buying, people are buying their houses in one of the size communities. You gotta keep the renters out. We used to live on the West Park Avenue. Had to move because every other house was obviously six feet. The house in question, the big house, has been chopped up where three people have individual rooms, if I'm not mistaken. Well, we can't discriminate whether they can have someone in their room with them or not. So that would be six people living in the big house. And if you put two people in each part, that's four. Now you've got ten people living on one piece of property. Traffic there is not in the right manner. And when it was non conformed over a year ago, it was our understanding that that would be the end of the apartment two places in the back. I could understand someone would take a house and renovating it and renting it or selling it, but that's not what those apartments were for. I doubt that there was a permit ever pulled for those when you gutted them out because you totally gutted them out. There's brand new appliances and everything. Well, you don't have to doubt that now. You can go down there and try that with a full okay. permit. I, I didn't know if you did or not, yeah. because they're completely no, we don't have to okay. right. That's fine. They're totally your mom. That's good. If that's what you did, that's fine. But our concern is how many people are actually going to live there. We cannot discriminate if someone's going to have a partner, a mate, or get married. You, it's not going to be three people. It's going to be six. So I live right behind the property and I'm totally against it because if these people are being rehabilitated and they do not have a vehicle, I can assure you they're going to walk through my backyard to head to DC in the Waffle House because there are no sidewalks that's going to take them that way. They're going to take the shortest path. So I'm not worried about it. Sorry, can you give me your name and address? Anthony Road, 317 Crestview Drive. did buy a property that is adjacent to the one that was R10. Remember, you bought the backyard at 316. Yeah. Right, that's right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, in opposition. Yeah. Do I speak? We'll give you the name and address for the record. Sir, Edward, 2805 Northfield Road. I'm uh, just a couple houses down from the property as well. Um, I have two minor children that live with me. The neighborhood is great. I really do love it. I bought my house there. Um, we actually moved there because it came from a bad neighborhood that had gotten broken into twice. And so that safety from our children um, led me to come to a safer neighborhood. Um, uh, I guess I'm hearing the purpose possibly for a halfway house, you know, uh, really scares me. The idea that um, the neighborhood that I used to live in, they would watch when my vehicles would come and go. And sure enough, they got it as soon as I was out of town. Like, they knew. So that's like really scary to think that you know they're there around all the time. Um, I prefer it to be residential, absolutely. Um, but you're saying like a family home. Um, if it was like strictly that, I don't feel like I would have a problem with it. Like long-term residential type of thing. You know, everybody needs to play safe like that. But running. Um, Thank you. Uh, would anybody else in opposition like to experience this guy? Um, I would have 
Three weeks of the you got two different ways to come to that. Well, I'm fixing to give you some information you've already heard. But You'll give us your name uh, and address uh, first, please. Uh, uh, Jonathan O'Connor, 316 Central Place. Uh, he bought my back door, <laughs> basically. So I want to echo everything he said, echo everything she said, and echo everything, especially about the kid that she said. If you have a houseway, a halfway house, I've got two young children. That makes me really nervous. And has me a little bit amped up about the, the possibilities that come with it. Um, and if something were to happen to her kids or my kids, it's going to be on your conscience. And I don't know if you want that. Um, as far as the green leaf thing, uh, when my grandmother passed away at 2500 Deborah Drive, we sold it and the people that leased for Greenleaf's halfway house bought it and they had absolutely ruined it. I mean, they come as close to demolishing the place as you can get it without getting the permit to demolish it. I mean, it's this pathetic. And I don't want that for my property value, but I especially do not want that for my kids. We moved like her from a cracker neighborhood to one that we thought was going to be safe. We've been there for a year. It's been wonderful. First time in my life I could leave my doors unlocked or leave the car unlocked, leave my kids' toys out and not have to worry about it. And a halfway house is just going to take a dog over every bit of that. So, I'll get it. Thank you, sir. Anybody else in opposition? Please. <clears throat> I actually have to go back to work. Do you need anything? No. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. My name is Jim Harrell. I live at 320 Peter Road. The man, he has done a fantastic job on uh, bringing the house back up to life. My question is, uh, how many people are you going to put in the big house in the main, in the main residence? Is that going to be leased out to an individual or a family? Or is it already split up in the apartment size? Well, there's five bedrooms in that house. Uh, and it is already uh, the least. See, that's, that lets you know how much impact it's had. You answered your own question. You live next door. Of course, you rent your house next to that also. So you are against hell because you're renting your property. You know, you rent 322 Eager, and of course, 316 Eager is also a rental house on the left hand side. But anyway, but the truth about it is, Harold, that these people are already in there. And they've been in there for six months. And you didn't even know they were there. And they've not called you any problems. You're the next door neighbor. They're in and out. They're, they're houses. They're uh, cars. And I don't know what's in there. Yeah, but I tried to speak to a couple of them in the backyard back there. And they sort of. Well, they've been told. Don't, don't interview with the neighbors. Don't call them a problem. Okay. They, uh, so, so they, and they have Because you didn't even know they were there. <laughs> I knew they were there. I, I, I know. So what I'm saying. Is that going to be a permanent resident, the, the main house? Is that going to be a permanent resident for more than two people? Oh, sure. I mean, but it's not a two-bedroom house. It's, a, I don't know, it's 27, 2,800 square foot with a five, five, you know, four bedrooms. And then before all of it, they built an additional uh, mother-in-law suite on the back of it. So, you know, it's five bedrooms. Why, why didn't you pursue getting this changed before you had the apartments redone? To me, it feels well, like, it feels like um, you're going to just cram this down the neighborhood's throat. Oh, no. Okay, regardless of what, if, why didn't you pull a permit well, I, to, that, get it, to get it rezoned oh, before you did not spend all that money? Because I, you know, I never knew that, like I said earlier, I never knew that, that it was going to become an issue. I, I mean, they're labeled apartments, 
Uh, there were people living in them when I bought them. I turned the power on when I moved, when I got my crews in there, put the permit in there, you know, redid the wiring, redid the plumbing, running all down the street. Uh, I mean, you know. But you still didn't ask for a rezoning. You, you spent that money. That's, that's your money. You can do it any way you want to. But you're fixing that house to uh, house more than just a couple of people. Oh, I mean, I don't and, you know, uh, I couldn't deny it. I mean, I don't even see where that's an issue. That house, I mean, if I was in the rent business, I don't think uh, there would be an individual couple, just a husband and wife, come in and buy that house for five bedrooms. So, I mean, I don't even, I don't even know how to really address what you're saying by that. Uh, well, I, I'm very firmly against it. I know all, most of them make names, but as far as me renting, being a landlord, that home is in my sister and my name. And we rented it to a friend. He has been there nearly 15 years. And I don't 15 have, years and have, his yards are immaculate. I don't have a problem in the I have that. a hard time keeping my yards and up. And the only thing I was making that comment is because there was people I had to like, you as a group were against renters. And I was like, well, you got my left renter, and you're sitting over there, and you're renting the house Same. inside you. Same. What? I think we've, we've heard your, if, do you have anything else to address to the board as far as your concerns? We want to make sure we hear your concerns. So, I would like to know how many people are going to live if this goes to the uh, pre-working yeah. house. Right. How many people are going to be there? Are you going to limit it to two or 22? How many people are you going to put in the main house? Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Do you have some questions? Okay. If, Trump, we'll, if we can hear the rest of the opposition, and then we'll come back to Tracy. Uh, other opposition. Would somebody else like to address the board? Thank you, sir. My name is Mickey Williams. I'm with the 2806 Bud Nancy Circle. I can tell you that I volunteered at the police department with Brian Chambers for three years. And the city has problems. There's, there's zoning, there's ordinances that say how many cars can be in the parking lot, can park on the grass. Okay, we've never been able to manage that effectively. Okay, this just seems to me to be another case. If the people are not walking, they've got to have some transportation sitting there. Okay, so you've got those issues going. We've got School buses and stuff up there on Eagle Road. A bunch of kids, I don't have to count. I guess we could stand out there and get it now. But the kids get off the bus. And they got to walk down the street. There's no sidewalk out there. And they got to walk down the side of the street or walk on the property to keep them getting run over on Eagle Road and speeding traffic. They're going to be there with people who live in these proposed apartments, dwellings, whatever you want to call them got to be there. And these people that are coming out of there, it is a halfway house. They're not rehabilitated. It is a halfway house. So there's got to be a high percentage as statistics show of what can happen. Okay? We don't need that out there. And I think this is just opening the door for more. If this one in my opinion, I know how the city of Alcosta works. If this one gets out there and gets through, there's nothing to say that these people that live in the heart of Bud Mackey can't come out there and say, I want to subdivide my house. I want to put apartments in there. And I want to bring these people from Greenlee and put them there. It, it just keeps, it's like a plague, it just keeps growing. There need to be areas in Valdosta that are specifically for this purpose and keep it in a place where it can happen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, in opposition? Yes. Um, I'm Kate Bridges, um, Retire Solicator. I'm sorry, address? 29 Fort Lane, Mackey, so we're just right on the street. Now, he kind of brought it up, but I wanted to point out and I call the Board of Education and check on this. But if it is going to be a halfway house, which I think that's what the whole issue sounds like that's where it's headed, and that's what already is there. And even though he says said that there hasn't been any 
It's just to say that it's not going to when the next one that moves in or the next one that moves in. But what I wanted to point out is right across the street on Eagle Road, on the ends of Funwood Circle, and on the other end of Funwood Circle, those are two bus stops. They pick up city schools, city school children. When I went to work last year and retired now, I would pass by and there's crowds of children catching the buses at both those spots. And I call it still a city bus stop today. And my next thing is, he doesn't feel these repercussions. He doesn't live there. He's out, he's away from it. He does it, sets it up, but it's other people around that have to live with it, not him. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in opposition to the last bit? Excuse my voice. Uh, Ashley McClive, I'm 28 or 80 old for you. Uh, I came down here today. I thought it would open my mind, I think I still have one. I see, I see issues from both places. Very glad I'm not sitting in, in y'all's position, okay? Uh, my objection is to have the house. There was an apartment there before. I'm not going to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and argue his feelings are wrong, okay? That's something that's going to have to be decided. Let me ask you a question. What's our feet mean? Single family residence? Uh, yes. Why are we letting a halfway house exist already in a single family residence? It's asinine that we're sitting in a public building with public employees making this argument. It's not being done. What are we arguing about? Why did it ever happen to begin with? Is my question. Okay. Okay. I, I, I'm not here to make a show. Like I say, I, there's, I've got certain sympathies with this guy. I really do. But all of my neighbors have pointed out something that I think is very, very valid. And then if this, if if we do it here. You know, I've got a little old red man down there. I'm not talk somebody in, you know. It's out there in that area, people that have a head of going in and doing what they want and then coming back and getting a permit. And y'all know. Okay? So let's, 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 let's try to find a medium ground here. I don't think a halfway house is medium. The man's made an investment. He is entitled to return his money. I, I will stand with him on that any time. But just because we're entitled to return on our money, don't mean we're entitled to everything. Yeah. Yeah. Any and everything we can do. I want to live in the laws of the city of Dallas. I want to abide. I was living out there when we were taking in the city limits. I didn't like it all. I'm here, when I get tired of it, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Anybody else in opposition? Yes. No? Um, correction, I believe you had some more I questions some for Tracy. Questions Trace. for Tracy. Um, why is this case here? How is it that we're sitting here in this case? Is this the Gila case? Yes. He, because it appears that he's been renting this for some time, he should have gotten a P lock if it was absent yes. from a year some time ago. Yes. I'm going to defer it now. How is it that we're hearing this case, Mr. Martin? Uh, Matt, we might can the before you start. Yes. There's a lot of I've been running around in that neighborhood for years. One of my high school buddies grew up there. Henry Davis' family. Those duplexes have been there for 40 plus years. I don't know when they were built, but they've been there for a long time. Which, when they were in the county, which it was, it was a non-conforming, grandfathered in use, basically. If I understand it right. And he has requested that he can go back to having a duplex, 
in a single family house. My question is that, and I may be usurping you, I'm sorry. Uh, we're here to determine what they can put in there as far as the number of units. But do we really have the power to say it cannot be this or it can't be that? I don't know that falls in our jurisdiction, does it? I don't know if we can say it can't be a halfway house or something like that. I don't know that we have the power to limit it, do we? All right, there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of extra discussion going on, and it's not going to be in the request. That's, that's what I'm saying. What? As Tracy said, this half report is absolutely correct. This is a request for appeal like approval. You know what that acronym stands for. And it's to reestablish the use of that rear building as a duplex, well, two dwelling units, one building, the top is a duplex. It um, was previously used for many years as that, not conforming. The wall was in the county, under R15 zoning in the county. Mm -hmm. The city annexed it in 2006. When we annexed properties like that, this is part of the Ottomans acquisition. It was annexed as is. So the non-conformity continued. The city R15 zoning was not allowed what it was. So fell to the rules of non-conformance. When the use ceases for 12 months or more, and we're over a year now, then these cannot be reestablished except in conformity to current regulations. R15 allows single family residence. It also allows an accessory dwelling, singular, with a special approval. It does not allow duplex. Three dwelling units on one parcel, by definition, is multi family, even though it looks a little bit different, which is why these conditions are worded the way they are. You have staff's idea to keep it under control in terms of density and other people. The use of the overall property is not on the agenda for the Senate committee. The use that staff has found to be is a single family residence. The building in question is the rear yard building, the accessory building. Um, whether or not it's a halfway house is a bit of a plan. Staff visited the site. Um, we've heard all the rumors as well. Um, I, for one, fully expected to find a halfway house already in operation. Uh, we toured the facility, asked a lot of questions, did a lot of thinking, and staff, for what it's worth, at the moment, has made the determination that the main building is used as a single family residence. Not your typical residence, but it does not quite meet the definition of halfway house or transitional housing facility. Those are separate line items in our zoning code, have separate definitions, separate rules. Under the current R15 zoning, the property is not eligible for either. It would first require a reason <coughs> and then probably a conditional use of it. Whole separate process, whole separate issue. If someone disagrees with staff's finding and interpretation of the code, there is an appeals process for that. Except application and advertise, you all become the and jury. And that's a whole separate issue, whole separate discussion. That is not what's on your agenda today. What's on your agenda today is appeal up. Or reuse of the building in the rear yard. There's a lot of discussion about halfway house. Staff is a little bit concerned that it might transition into a halfway house, um, but not take a whole lot of it to do that. But based on how the residents come to be there, the lack of required license, voluntary residence, and so forth, it is a single family residence. It's a pretty good size one. Five bedroom house, almost 3,000 square feet. You had asked Ms. Gordon about the condition of the number of people. That is no more than two residents per duplex well. Remember, this is only pertaining to the duplex, not the main house. Um, the duplex units are not very big, barely a thousand square feet, two bedroom units. Um, R15 allows us an accessory dwelling unit with a special process. When I look at this independent property, in front of the road, R15 is on the surrounding pattern. Primary use is certainly single family. This building in the back is not visible from the street, and I would say barely visible from outside as I walk around the building. Large property. But I would not want it to become populated with a lot of people that it starts mimicking an apartment complex more than a single family residence with an accessory use in the back. So 
the way I look at it, an accessory dwelling probably would be a, a review and approve there. This just happens to be an extra unit that's already there on a large lot. So From a density perspective, um, an acre and a half, three dwelling units, that's an average of a half acre per dwelling unit. Our 15 zoning would allow greater density than that, by right. So if this were a smaller lot, staff would probably have a different thing. I have so many questions. I still want to know, why is this case here? This gentleman seems to be renting the place now. He's renting the house. The house, now. Okay. So, I didn't answer that question. Um, and there's no issue with the house. That a house. That house, house has, he said, an in-law apartment on the back. So is it a duplex? They, what was on the back, and I looked at the tax code as part of the property research. Once upon a time, the main building was classified itself as a duplex. And when I looked at it, I thought that's what it would be. When I visited the site, I was looking for the other dwelling unit on the main building. I'd already seen the duplex. Walked all through there. Um, it is, I think, was a duplex many, many years ago. And I think it was his predecessor that did the changes, but it got combined back into the dwelling. You can see where the addition is. Um, you can kind of see where the kitchen might have been, but it has long not been a kitchen. It just has an extra door to the outside. It's really a house with extra rooms put in the back. It functions as one dwelling unit, all internal access, one kitchen. It's a big house. So and I would not want it to go back to the duplex. That's not, again, not part of your agenda. Does the city have a limit on the number of unrelated people that can live together in a single? We um, have it in the code, but it is not constitutionally enforceable. We have a definition for family. And it's from many, many years ago before there were certain court cases that prohibit the local governments from defining a family. The only thing we can do as a local government is address the symptoms. One of the people in the audience made reference to the residential parking airway district, which limits the number of cars that can be parked in the yard. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing, only tool that we have to monitor. And the only thing that can be done about that, someone has to complain to this complaint generally. Or the city marshals see or the city cars. Marshals. They actually have a running database of license plate numbers if they maintain. Um, they're out looking around, probably looking more at properties closer to the campus. Response to calls and the beginning of each semester for the issue tends to be an uptick of violations of a little more active looking mm -hmm. for those things. But that's so an ongoing thing for 10 years. You can't limit the number of occupants to the number of bedrooms? Not as a family, if you want to try and put a limit of occupancy on the building, you can try that and see. I'm not convinced it's enforceable. Um, all of the legal staff here, you all get to weigh in on. Well, I mean, I'm just wondering, could you put 30 people in that building? Then you start getting into other codes that do have heat, um, life safety codes, fire codes, things of that nature, and that's relevant to the facility. Um, legally, I don't know how much the building can hold, given its size, probably about 50 people, in terms of raw occupancy of the structure. I would think the city would certainly have the ability to enforce the limitation of the number of occupants. I can't imagine that there's it's it's unconstitutional that the city would create some sort of law that that would limit it. Um, and, and the only your only solution would be to rely on fire codes or something like that. And which tend to produce large numbers. Consider some families that have ten or twelve kids. So what do they do about all the college students? I mean, how do you how do you limit how do you limit it? I mean, isn't always the concern that, uh, that that there could be a brothel or something? I mean, I've always heard that, or that there be a sorority house in one of these houses, mm -hmm. and you just have uh, 20, 30 college students living in one house. And then it becomes a fraternity house or sorority house that's a little bit of use. So how do you regulate that? How do you regulate? How do you keep all these college students from living in one house? by noise, traffic, parking, something other than single families of the property that is in for 
those things that you can use. So right now, determining who's related to who and who has a right to be there as a family unit, who is a single family, there's a lot of case law. But the code still has those the regulations in the definition in there, thinking that maybe some other case law might come along with something. That was a decision made some years ago, and it has not changed. Matt, you spoke to the fact that you have inspected and walked through, and that at this point, you do not think that the residents, that the people renting the residence qualify technically as a halfway house or a transitional home per the code. Correct. Per our definition. But, but you also said that it could easily train, it could cross that line. How do you, if that happens, how do you know that or how do we know that? Is it, is it again, complaint based? Um, a, a complaint has to come in that all of a sudden you go back and look at it again or the reason I'm asking is because other situations Somebody goes and puts a boarding house into a residential home. They have to file a business license to put to put that boarding house in that residential home. That business license then brings it back to your attention. What here? What is the thing here that will launch it to your attention again? A variety of things. Something to trigger us to go look at the facility, reinvestigate, um, licensing, perhaps approval for a state license, which such facilities would be required to have. Um, or just periodically we can make that to ourselves to do a little bit. Um, part of the reason we were there was talking to current tenant um, in the facility that they were operating, how they were operating. The big issue was how the people came to be there. They were not sent there by an institution, they're not fresh out of an institution to live there. It's typical of a halfway house. There would be people who came to the prison system or to regulation facility, that's not the kind of place that they're good. These people are there voluntarily. They may have been in a halfway setting previously, but that's not the purpose of being in this facility. If it becomes that, where people are referred here by an institution, then they start making these definitions, and that becomes these definitions. And, and this property, if I understand correctly, is not appropriate for a halfway house or a transitional home. Correct. As a permission, it's under our 15. A halfway house re, um, is, requires our sixth living or higher with a conditional use. Transitional housing facility requires an RM zoning or higher with a conditional use. The property is eligible for either of those zonings, and if, and if rezoned, then eligible for a conditional use. And that's not what they're asking. That's a whole separate process. All we're whole deciding separate today separate. is can they use the back apartments? Correct. Can right. they reuse the duplex well, building in the rear yard that's existing as, as, a, du we, as a duplex? And all the things are allowed in the duplex. The only thing staff is suggesting is we put some limitations on that particular building and the buffer that's there. Right. We need to keep in mind we are not talking about the big house. Correct. We are talking about the duplex only. That's right. But it's, it's, a part, it's a part of the whole, I mean, it's all part of one property. So I yes, don't see why yes, we can't limit it. I can't see why we can't limit it all. I mean, you know, we're, we're looking at this one parcel, and there's two buildings on one parcel, and there's been a, a recommendation that we condition whatever we end up doing to, to limit the number of occupants in the duplex. I don't see why we can't limit the number in the big house, too. I mean, you know, it's all one parcel of land. This is all coming before us as one uh, variance request. Now, do you disagree with that, Matt? Or you, you can, anything's legal to challenge. You can try it. I mean, it was something I thought about that I knew as a single family residence that was not going to be asked, nor was it required to be. And I thought that's not going to be down that road for the main building because it's currently not covered. By how many? Uh, five that I saw, and it's a five bedroom house, which, you know, I can think of a number of households around town that have a lot more than that. Right. And there's, you know, you can't control that. You can force that, I think, that I think is the one way to do it. You, technically, because we are addressing just the duplex here, we can limit 
the total number of people within the duplexes themselves or the total number of people on the property? I think because the applicant is coming to you asking for permission to reuse an existing building, I think that opens the door for you to put some reasonable conditions on such an approval. I think it went beyond what they're asking and put a condition on something else is shaking your ground. But what, wasn't it determined that over a year ago it was considered a non conforming building, the two apartments? It's been over a year. That the last meeting we had, please. I'm sorry. Technically, I will work, so I'm sorry. And just to clarify that and clear up some of the confusion, this is not a reason here. There is no request to rezone the property. I want to kind of that up. There is no request before you about the use of the property as a halfway house or anything else. It is simply reusing an existing duplex structure in the backyard as a duplex. It was a non conforming use as a duplex. Um, it ceased operation. No different than non conforming accessory dwelling in the backyard. There were just one, or when unoccupied for a long enough time in the view of the document, it would be the same situation. This is a little bit different since two dwellings in the middle. The flip side is it's on one wall. And you get there one time. Any other questions for staff?